How you been though? Man, shoot, maintaining ain't no complaining on this side. <laughs> good, 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 good. You know, you know, you know, you stay in my prayers and all that, you know. All that all that good energy sending in your way all the time. Appreciate it, appreciate it. You know we need it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So what's going on with you, man? You got this tour going on. You, you know, I see you on the wheels of steel. You, you know, you know. always. That's what I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be behind the turntables and the maestro the whole the whole tour, man, and giving these young artists the opportunity to shine. That's what it's all about. And that's literally the future superstar tours. It's you, you know how it is. Like we we come up with the old school promo days. We come up with and then even with the energy of like the 106 and parks or the 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 up and coming on the verge list or. Uh, you know, even the tours that used to go out that would really introduce the people that were the most pop in the bubbling and then they literally were turning to superstars the first time you were seeing where they pulled up to a HBCU or a high school, or, you know, and really that that groundwork, that real work. Uh, and so I'm showing these artists who are popping how to become superstars. But then at the same time, I'm also giving the fans that interaction and that opportunity to to be a part of the superstar movement. Yeah, that's crazy. And then and then what made you do, you know, be behind the, you know, the wheels of steel, the turntables, like, you know, as the DJ, I, you know, that wasn't what I was expecting actually. Now, you know, it's crazy. And, and I, when I sit back and reflect on like my entire career, man, like this is where I started. Like if I'm talking about, especially in that space of like, DJing parties in high school, having my first two set of turntables. I like I never really wanted to be on the mic or in front of the camera. I was the people I looked up to were the people who were the producers and the DJs. And I wanted my own label. I, I looked up to, you know, Jermaine Dupree, Puff, you know, uh, all of those cats that was, you know, we were selling mixtapes out the trunk of my mama car type of vibe all through high school. And I, I had the vision to be like, yo, I'm going to have pretty much even what I'm doing now. Like, I'm going to have a, a bunch of young artists that I can, you know, be on my label. Like, I was that kid that, you know, in high school, I, I was passing out cards with my label on it. You know what I mean? And said I was going to sign sign the homies. So I think, and obviously, but through the, the blessings of God, man, I got the opportunity to actually be in front of the camera and make music and stuff. But this is my origin, man. This is what... This is really kind of being that maestro and that 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 producer. I mean, looking up to the greats like the Quincy Joneses and, you know, L.A. and Babyface. Like, those are the people that I've always inspired or aspired to be like. Yeah, yeah. Now, you got Simba on here. Now, a lot of a lot of these people I've never actually heard of. What, what was the selection process like in getting? Well, that's the thing. Like, sometimes you probably you might know they song. And it's bubbling on TikTok, but you ain't put the two and two together. And that's really the purpose of the tour is to show people who like, yo, nah, they popping. Like, you know, 24K Golden is an international superstar. Big Boss Bay got the hottest record out right now with the Pretty Girl Walk, you know. But it's like, now we actually get to put the name with the face, with the music. And that's what we're missing. That's what we have with 106 and Park. That's what we have with the Scream Tour. You know, and even it's a page straight out of Barry Gordy's book at Motown. It was like, yo, especially back then like that you had to put every artist on the bus from stevie wonder to diana ross to the temptations and send them to the hood send them to the community so the people could see their face because yeah. it wasn't no music videos back then it wasn't that so that's literally what we're doing we're pulling up to the community with the artists and letting everybody be a part of the superstar movement you uh steadily uh, break artists, you know, in different forms. Obviously, sometimes it might be through something like this. So there are times a battle rap, um, you know, even comedy to some extent. Um, do you do you feel are you, are you this conduit? Do you do you like want credit? Like what 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 like what it's is funny? Yeah, I never wanted the credit, man. That's like like you said, I've done it for my entire career, but I kind of just fall back and allow myself to. Be a conduit, you know what I mean, and really, you know, I take pride in the curation process. Uh, but it's it, it's a, it's really what God put me here to do, you know, is to create these platforms. And at this point in my career, I've done everything I've ever wanted to do or could ever imagine. So now it's like, let me just build platforms for the next generation and offer opportunities to others. And you know, if they want it, it's here, it's here to get it. Yeah, do you, do you consider yourself? 
you know, it's hard for somebody to say, yeah, I'm a renaissance man. Yeah, that's what I am. <laughs> but, uh, but I do think about you in that fashion. Do you regard yourself as, uh, you know, a modern day renaissance man? Man, I definitely know I'm built different. It's funny that you, you say that uh, because my first company, when I first started producing Wild and Out uh, in early 2000s, the company was called Mr. Renaissance. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely, you know, toyed with that that term for quite some time. But I think that's really, it's, it's in all of us, man. It, it really is to, we have the gift of, of entertainment. We have the gift of, music and and and, and dance and mm -hmm. just creators uh uh making something out of nothing and when you can tap into that like you kind of had to do it all you had to be able to be full forward thinking and, and multifaceted just to even survive and you know hopefully you know a little bit of that dna from the ancestors is what you know been keeping me rocking this all the time being that this is, uh, you know, hip hop's 50th anniversary and we're looking back at the culture and you just you touched on it, you know, you kind of had to do everything. Uh, where would you say, you know, for you, hip hop, what, what has it meant to you? What has it, you know, given you? Yeah. Survival. You know what I mean? Uh, hope, optimism. You know, what I mean? think about what just in that short span of 50 years, how much generational wealth has been created from our culture. You know what I mean? From our struggle, you know what I mean? Showing that strength, that resilience to be able to say, we created something out of nothing and people are going to be feeding their families for generations just based off of, you know, what, what, what Cool Herc and, and Grandmaster Flash and them, you know, perfected so long ago. So I, I love the fact that I get to, you know, be a little small corner of it, you know what I mean? And, as somebody now who gets to, you know, hopefully curate uh, the next generation and one, make sure that they understand the, the history and, and all of the essential elements that it took to get here. And now, you know, we in the bag era where everybody's getting to it. Um, and even though it is commercialized, at least we bringing it back to the community. Yeah. Do you think people forget those things that made superstars? I feel like, um, some sometimes we look back and we forget that you know red man I, I use red man as an example like he was on this right while he was a roadie first of all before he was anything you know he was yeah. lifting crates and then he got on a song and then another song and then on epmd's album and then yeah. got a deal and then you know what i mean the month of the man That's even, even Pac was a perfect example of that you know what That's i mean good. like yeah. Pac was a digital underground roadie, and then they gave him a verse on the same song. And right. Then, you know, for same, then he, he had his own situation and came, you know, the most prolific, you know, MC and, and entertainer of this generation. So, so I think that's part of the process. That's the building blocks. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that sometimes you don't see too many superstars today because they didn't go through that process. And, you know, like, even myself, man, I, I was carrying crates for for uh for Biz Marquee for years, you know what I mean, in, in the 90s, just so I could even leave, just get in the club because I was a teenager. I mean, Jazzy Jeff with, and that touch of jazz with had me just moving around doing Mr. Miyagi type of stuff. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out how to, you know, get, sit up under the master of, of DJs. So mm -hmm. it is a, a schooling process. Uh, that, that gets you that accreditation to be able to say, I am hip hop. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't even know that about you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jazzy, Biz and Jazzy, Jazzy Jeff. That's what I was saying, man. Like, I was, I was a DJ from, from the gate before right. the Serato. Oh, from crate days. Right, right. That's crazy. Okay, okay. Do you have any particular um, hip, now that you say that, like uh, a special memory? Uh, uh, in hip hop, that you know, you know, a fond memory like for me, like for one one time I opened, I was a rapper, I opened for KRS One, and that was the biggest thing ever for me, you know. Yeah, you, you have, I mean, the night that my career took off, man, it was a very a similar situation, man. And uh, me and my rapper, we got an opportunity to open up for Outcast, and we were, we were, you know a little teenage uh, high school version of them. It was right when AT Aliens came out, their second album. And it's funny because, you know, 
rock the stage. They show love. But the host of that night was Guy T, who had the Fat Tuesday. Have you ever seen the Fat Tuesday mm -hmm. the documentary? That was the night. That, I used to Guy you know, T. Guy Tort. He was Guy T back then. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Guy Tory was, you know, was now, you know, a great comedian and started Fat Tuesday, gave me the opportunity from that show, invited me to Hollywood and the rest of this. Dope, dope, dope. Um, are you going to act again? Like, I mean, I haven't seen you do <laughs> much acting. Like, you know, I always saw you in the uh, spirit of Will Smith, you know, kind of touching everything. Yeah. Seen you acted too much. Uh, I think just my my business acumen just took over and really trying to get to that bad. But I think it's funny that you say that. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go hard for you know in this space as an entrepreneur CEO uh, for a little for a few more years, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that acting hat back on and then focus because that's something you got to focus on full time. And I feel like now that I'm matured as a man and kind of lived uh, a lot of life, then I can start really doing the roles. Because also even as a filmmaker, I mean, I've directed, you know, quite a few films and stuff like that. I, I want to be able to tell stories for us that really resonate the best way possible. So it's definitely a focus of mine. But again, you got to you got to be focused on it. So I'm, I'm kind of rocking heavy right now. But give me a few years. I'm going to get back back into my lead man back. Oh, dope. I got a couple of things for you, but I, I'll touch base with you on that. But um, yeah, ironically, yeah. Um, All Hip Hop, last week we had an announcement we made. We're um, starting a documentary. QD3 is our director. So we got uh, a my brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're working together to tell, you know, at least a part of the All Hip Hop story and including that in the thread of 25 years of breaking news and interview so we're going to definitely call you for that for the interview at least you know oh yeah so for sure so so q i said what up yeah definitely definitely yeah we'll be talking tomorrow but yeah i want to ask you man you know how are you doing uh personally man like uh your personal life has played out in the in, in the tabloids i guess you know online <laughs> you know absolutely right yeah yeah definitely I, yeah it's love man you know what i mean i i I kind of just operate on the highest frequency I'm allowed to, man. Maybe kind of move, moving at that, you're on that 528 hertz at all times, man. So, and so I think at the way it's positioned, people are fascinated, but it's like, this is my life. This is how I move. So it's it's all positive and love. Yeah, the fam, the, the fam is good. Like all the, the babies and stuff. Was, the, whole, the whole gang. Man. Yeah. My 12 constellations, they all rocking. <laughs> That's what's up. So um, you recently sang. So I, I had mixed feelings. You sang Can You Stand the Rain? And I was like, man, I don't know if I like, like, I was like, man, you know, that's a classic record. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm absolutely. Like, if you think it's like, I actually want like the, the key that it was in. I actually, I threw in some, the whole thing. I threw in some key sweat, some SWV. But that <laughs> really what that purpose was, is like, I could sit down at the piano and sing and play anything. And that's the thing where people always, and I don't be trying to bolster do none of that, but it's like, I'm not impressed <laughs> when somebody can rhyme some words together. Like, like what impresses me is real musicianship and people who have an ear for music and really know how to get down. I came up in a church. So it's one of the, again, to that thing, like I never wanted to like be an R&B singer, but I I could, there's, I'm, I could sit down and I could get, give me any instrument and I'll make it work. Uh, yeah. And that was just, you know, I was in my studio messing around, like, and I think even probably what I'll start doing, I'll probably start going live and just, uh, because that's just what I was on. And I think, you know, that might have been, I might even been in my feelings a little bit, just based off singing. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> so right. Like, you gotta yeah. be singing that song, right? <laughs> but yeah, it wasn't, you know, it was one of those things that I just do from time to time. You check, like, like I did, we did a session like that with Kiara Shear where we sang Fred Hammond's No Weapon. And like, okay. you know, it's just. I think again because I I do so many things and people be in my personal business stuff so much people actually forget that I'm actually talented. <laughs> so so yeah, sometimes yeah. I gotta I gotta pull the keys out of the guitar out and just just you know even put my own spirit just to let you know that no I still got it. Yeah, yeah. Because when I used to watch your show, I used to be looking really hard like at the end when you would play, and I'm like, is he really playing that? Like. You know, and I don't understand why people, and that's what I was like. I did, I used to go live on the, in the studio a lot too, but 
where people just really just I don't know they just don't want to give me that like, yeah. like, it's like I, I do it same thing with the DJing like when I DJ I see a lot of people pull up and they be like yo you really do it like, yeah this is I'm just I'm really about this I'm really really for the culture so I think uh, a lot of people. So, you know, I, I guess it's, again, I guess it's fascinating. So I, I understand the intrigue. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, it's funny, man. I'm such a big fan of yours, bro. I um, You had a deal, headphone deal, right? And, yeah. And, and mine broke. No, 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 they got stolen. They got stolen. <laughs> mine got stolen. And I was like, yo, let me get these joints again. And they, I couldn't find them, right? So <laughs> I, I bought what I thought was yours because I guess the Flips, company oh yeah yeah, yeah. with them and they then used the logo for a second <laughs> yeah i was like i bought the flips it wasn't the same thing i was nah. like <laughs> so then i had to go on amazon i found them on amazon so i spent a couple coins but i got them i appreciate you Jay. Yeah, 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 awesome. definitely, definitely man so now nah, i gotta salute you man with the business all day um oh, you know i want to ask you like a, a, a little bit of a deeper question um you know, in the last few years, you know, the Jewish black issue has been ignited on several fronts, you know, from Kanye yeah. and even yourself. Um, you know, the I don't know if there's a question or more of a comment, like, you know, your thoughts on it now and some time has passed. Um, you know, have you learned anything? Um, have things changed, you know? Man, I, I'm gonna be super honest with you, man. That that process was uh, a growth moment for me on so many levels as a man. Uh, and even now, to like, like, we have a, a podcast, uh, myself and the CEO of the ADL, uh, Jonathan Greenblatt, called Solutions to Hate or Not to Hate. And it's really talking about the equation of our two communities from two different perspectives on a, you know, even it's almost like traumatic in a sense to where we we voice our side, uh, you know, or the perspective as a black man, he, and then he voices his side from the Jewish man and we really I mean just even that alone is is helpful and, and educational for both communities right and again to because that's the thing we can sit up here and be be enraged but if we don't engage what are we really doing if we can't learn from one another and clearly we all know the issues we all know the tropes we all know the stereotypes uh and you know if we're really again I'm I'm no longer about just talk you know, like I, we can sit out on every podcast and talk about what we believe and who we are. But if you just want to podcast, go off, don't nothing happen. Mm -hmm. What did you really do? And that's, you know, it's one of the reasons if I'm really about that generational wealth, that's why I created Future Superstars. If I'm really about connecting with a community and find solutions, that's why we created that podcast. So I'm really putting my money where my mouth is and my energy to where my heart is. So that to me, that situation said, like, all right, I'm done talking. Everybody talk. Like yeah. if we got, let's figure it out. Let's solve it. Like what, what's the problem? So the next people who say something in front of a microphone can have an understanding of what it is. So they don't, they don't stumble and fumble and have to lose opportunities or get so-called canceled and all of that stuff. Uh, when it, on the next go around. And it's, it's really, it's just about bringing people closer together. I mean, ultimately we, we, uh, nobody's monolithic, but we're all one organism that allows this thing to keep pumping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, with the, the way the algorithm works, it seems like more and more talk is what people want to do. You know, they want to monetize the drama as opposed to yeah. really finding solutions. You know, that's yeah. that's how I see it. Yeah, it's the low frequency, man. And it's easy to it's it's easy to hear the low frequency, you know what I mean? Because it's so it, you don't gotta do much. Uh and you know, a, a negative begets a negative, but if you're really trying to elevate. You got it. You got to put some effort behind that. So I like I'm not mad at it. Like, you know, I know how to play the game just like the best of them. But, you know, if I'm really at the position in my life and where I'm at, like I, I, I really got to create solutions and opportunities for others. Were you ever scared? Because I was I was scared for you. I'm not going to lie. I was very I was highly concerned. You know, I sent you a DM at that point. Um, yeah. you know, just sending my prayers and, you know, just knowing, you know, your spirit and everything. You're very, very. Nah, I wasn't scared because I knew what my heart was. I knew what my heart yeah. is. Like, that's, you know, these are one of those things like, oh, you want, it, it, they, they trying to test me. So let me turn it into a testimony. Let me show you what I'm really built. Of. And especially, I mean, 
luckily, like I said, I've been blessed enough to where I can stand firm on with what's mine for what because I I don't necessarily have to to make decisions based off of money. Uh so I can, you know, I could walk away from anything and I have multiple times. It's, it's been it's been shown. So I think being able to be in a power position like that. It's my duty to speak up when I need to speak up, but it's also my duty to be wise and to be kind and and to operate out of love. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So I don't know if we've ever, so switching gears just a little bit. So, you know, there's a lot of, lot of lists going on. I think, you know, hip hop lists going on and, you know, all hip hop hasn't done a list in a long time, but I think, I think we're going to try to do it, right? But we want to uh-huh. do justice and we want to do it fair and equitable. So, I don't know if you have a top five now. I don't want your top five from for forever, right? Like like yeah, your, yeah. your current five, like maybe the last ten years, right? Not like Slick Rick and you know Jay. Right. You know, it's no, no. funny that because that's even the whole. Because you know, I do the top five on, on my radio show too. So, but we and we kind of break it down all the time, and we call it like the the top five of generation. Z, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right, right. And like, and the, I, I mean, if so, if we're excluding everybody from Pac and Eminem and Biggie and all of them, and we going from from them on, uh, you mean you? I mean, but then it's so weird because where does Wayne fall in that? Because it's like, yeah, but Wayne still came. Wayne still came out in the nineties though, so. He's yeah, still yeah. one of those, you know what I mean? He's the blue, he's literally the blueprint for now. Yeah, that's what he said. He's the apex. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you got to, oh, you got to give it to Drake. Drake. You got to give it yeah, just, just for, you know, just for what he, he's done. You know what I mean? Just culturally and the people, I'll salute him for the people that he's given opportunities to. You know what I mean? When, when the light is on him, super bright, he brings everybody else in so they can get some shine too. So, and just, I mean, lyrically to me, is is he's a poet. He's, he's, the, he's gifted in putting words together. And then he's also an amazing, you know, song maker. You know what I mean? Uh, then, so I'd go Drake, Kendrick, uh, Cole, you know. Uh, and then... Shoot, Simba. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm just, just, yeah. just even based off of what he he's doing and watching his moves, man. I definitely he was, Simba's in my top five for sure of uh, this generation. Yeah, effortless. You any anyone else? Any any other ones in there? Uh, I mean, who we got? That, that wasn't five. Who that, that, that was about? four. Uh, that was four. Oh, cause you're right. You said Wayne was it is. So yeah. So I said Drake, Kendrick, Cole. Um, get one more. This generation, who am I really, really rocking with that I'm impressed with? Uh, you know, who I really like, or uh, and it just I, I feel it ill with that kid, Smino. Oh, yeah, he's uh, from he our top yeah. list of last year, yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah, really fully tapped good. in yet, but I do know the name was in our top. Albums of like last year. Yeah, I think. he give he give me the the whole Andre three thousand, you know Kendrick, but with more Southern draw from St. Louis. The way his wordplay is crazy, he, and he he about it. He really speak it. Like him and Simba are probably the two like the two young cats generation. I'm like hey, they they taking the torch and doing what they supposed to do. It. That's what's up, man. Yo, I just want to say appreciate you, man. What you got? Anything else coming up? Any other moves? Um, I know you're always working. Yeah, man. I mean, shoot, the future superstar is not just a tour; it's a TV show too. So we launching okay. the show uh, all the time. Yeah, so that's gonna pop this year. I mean, obviously, wilding out. You know, same vibes as you. We got we got our twentieth uh, season this year. You know, so uh, we we going we we got a nice little birthday to celebrate. For while and out this year as well uh everything man we got a bunch of new shows and stuff that 
you know, you'll, you'll start to hear about in the next upcoming weeks. But I literally have six new shows that are launching this year. That's crazy, man. Yo, man, as always, I salute you, brother, man. And uh, stay blessed and all that. And, um, we, you know, we'll tap in with you a little bit. I, hi, Chuck. Good to see you, my brother. We're going to need you on some of these seminars for the future superstar when we come to New York. I need you to be a part of the panel. Hey, I'm there. I'm already there. Whenever all right. You- all right. Salute. Peace. Peace.